Good morning, YouTube. We've been making some really good progress on Chico's car. Um, the video you're going to be watching today is just us throwing the rest of the parts together on the car. Um, we run into a situation where we decide to change the intake manifold. You'll see on the uh, later on in the video why. Um, so we get that ordered, and it's really just us just kind of messing around kind of show you guys how how more how we interact um together when we're you know working on the car you know, instead of just the normal nonsense right now i got chico over here we're working on uh miscellaneous stuff uh he ordered catch can lines so i'm currently installing the, the one little block to the can i already got the can mounted to the firewall he's messing with the wastegate. We have a bunch of other stuff we're gonna try to get done. Alright, so if you don't have one that fits. Your blood plug is installed. Huh? There's nothing else back here other than the axles to install. The assholes. <laughs> Oh, this is loose, by the way. What's loose? Yeah, I don't know. I like the loose stuff. So I can tighten it down. Mm -hmm. So. Yes, that worked out perfectly well. Oh. It's not hitting the hoses or anything. Damn. Yeah, I had eight. You have eight hoses? But we don't have it. I don't know that. I know that. Never go wrong with having more hose. Oh, the editing I'm gonna have to do. Oh, the editing I'm gonna have to do. <laughs> that, did we make that? That was for the CRX with some battery, something for battery. Can we use that for something? Or something? Oh. Alright, so we're not using this fitting. We need a dash eight, you said? I believe that I did the six on that was six. Can we can we just put a ten on there and clamp down with a hose? Clamped? Do that too. No, I mean, because then, then we can just do a ten to ten that. So let me see. Straight. Put it upwards. Instead of it coming toward me, have it go toward the hood. Machine. Oh. I mean, where am I supposed to tight? Worst case scenario, breaks the pipe. I'll say that. Why? Oh. Down pipes in the way. <laughs> of course it is. Yeah. Oh, will that fit? What? The handle for the jack. Oh, yeah, I was going to suggest that. Make sure you get this on there. 
video. Don't worry, it's recording. <laughs> Chico's currently trying to break the uh, dump tube from the waste tape. Something back, all this razor blade veterans, so we had all. Oh no, this razor blade sucks. I'm not going to get rid of that. Uh. Oh. Don't worry down there. <laughs> that shit like a dog. Hey, what? So, worry down there, take the shit like a dog. Right? While you're hitting your hose, should I uh, install this in for harness, I guess? Another day, another project on Chico's car. Uh, yesterday we got, I would say, a good amount of work done. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to remove the intake manifold because he opted to get a different intake manifold because we ran into the issue of we installed the FPR and then we're sitting there staring at it going, how are we going to adjust fuel pressure if we don't know what the fuel pressure is? And trying to find an aftermarket fuel rail for a two-bolt intake manifold is surprisingly difficult. So we're switching to a three bolt style. Well, the it's uh, we're getting the bull boost um, intake manifold and fuel rail. And I know I've read reviews and stuff, and I know that all their holes are drilled through, and I know how to fix all that. So I'm not worried about any of that. Um, it will relocate the FPR from here to here, so we can eliminate this hose this pipe all that and this will just plug right in it'll be a little cleaner obviously it'll be a nicer intake manifold we might be using i have a bigger throttle body we might use i'm going to try to pop this one off and see if the gasket breaks or not i also went out to the donor car and pulled out the dual core aluminum radiator as well as the condenser and the fan out of that we don't like how the dump tube, more than anything else, is hitting. It's kind of hard to see. Is hitting the fan. So we have an idea to where we're going to cut out the majority of the fan, put a slim fan in here so it's shorter. The problem is the EKs and I think the EGs too, they use the fan to mount condenser to the car so by cutting all that out removing the fan maintaining the mounting points for it will work a lot better there is obviously this pipe is going to get redone anyway just because it doesn't fit properly and apparently it's already what the very stuck something to it that's going to get redone. The downpipe's going to get redone once it's all running and done. So, not too concerned about that, but this, we have this literally pulled all the way forward right now. And it's, I mean, it works, but it doesn't because it's literally pushing on the fan. We're going to look at doing that. I need to mount the radiator in here right now. And we're looking at a shroud in the slim fan as well to clear the turbo since I know the radiator is going to stick out a little bit more. 
based on the experience with my car. I'm getting ready to get all that mounted in right now and test fitted. Intake man pulled off. Uh, that's it. Now, okay. I got the exhaust bolted on with the flange gasket, the donut gasket that didn't work. I got the uh, wideband sensor installed. I got the aluminum radiator installed. Trim the fan for the uh, vacuum port. Increase controller. Clean the fan off. Made everything look nice and clean, clean the overflow off. Uh, connected a few connectors I needed to connect, got the hoses on. Oh, get over here. I got the flywheel shield on, can't really see. And there you go, the exhaust flange. The exhaust is hitting something back there, but I'll have to get back there and see. It's, I think it's the gas tank. It's temporary. Um, yesterday we did get the catch can installed as well. We did a block plug to the can and then we did the valve cover to the can as well. Yeah. So these are take manifolds. Just waiting on the new one. And I need to Put the actions in, I can get the suspension together. Really, I can get this thing back on the ground with just doing that, because everything else I need to do is gonna be up top anyway. Oh, besides the intercooler, which I'm gonna have to tackle here soon. Sooner than later, keep putting it off, but it's gonna happen all day. Where we're at with this thing, waiting on the intake manifold still. It'll be here next week. I'm probably going to work on it tomorrow and try to get the wiring for the inside done. I have to wire the rest of the gauges up on this. I'm going to wire the air fuel to the ECU as well. I also have the parts to finish up the return on the turbo. So I'll get that mocked up and I did kind of glance at this today and not thrilled about it but the downpipe thing is pretty freaking low so I'm not even sure I'm going to be able to drive this thing with this downpipe on it we'll see I'm going to be a little miffed if I have to take it back off because it is kind of a pain in the butt all this turbo stuff's been this is why I'm an all motor guy I've never really messed with turbo before and I like to keep it all motor it's just it's easier Granted, I'm having all kinds of problems myself, so I say it's easier, but who knows? Who knows what's easier? Making any kind of power is not easy. Guys, so the last update I did on this, I believe the car was still on jack stands. I got the suspension all squared away, axles installed. We're still waiting on the intake manifold. It comes today. Uh, was also doing the wiring on the inside of the car. I worked on getting the ECU all wired in, so we got the ECU wired in, I got the uh, boost sensor plugged into the ECU, I got the wideband wired into the ECU, uh, the only thing I was missing were fuse links so I can connect both power ends, I got it grounded out already on the body. Uh, here's the gauges. I also don't know if the radio works because last time I was in this car it did not work so that's going to be something to find out as well. But otherwise that's about all I've gotten done so far. She uh, goes on his way in. We're going to finish wiring this up. Um, unfortunately the like I said the manifold's not here yet. We're going to run the vacuum lines for the boost controller. Mount the boost controller. I figure out where we want to put all that as well. So, 
that's the game plan today. Chico ordered a um, bull boost uh, intake manifold and fuel rail to combat the situation of us not having a fuel pressure gauge on uh, his stock setup after we overlooked that completely with ordering the FPR from AEM. Uh, so he ordered a gauge. We have the, uh, the whole other manifold set up already. I've already ripped that off the car and I just got the box and it is beat <laughs> i think they threw it a couple times i'm getting ready to open this up right now and i already have an idea of the issues i'm going to run into with it being that it's a cheap knockoff of everything else that's out there i'm hoping there's no damage on this thing though that's the one concern i can combat all the other issues What they do, unlike the AM ones, is they drill and tap the FPR holes all the way through. There's a metal burr in there too, I'll have to get that cleaned out. But otherwise it pretty much looks like an AM one with bull boost on it. So any other replica company, it's already got the AM. It's rated on both ends. fittings to use the stock fuel setup which is great because I'm not putting AN lines on his car it comes with o-rings which looks like for the injectors I won't be utilizing we won't be using the caps spacers uh, biggest question is going to be how the injectors mount I don't know if that's supposed to be crushed well, it's definitely not supposed to be crushed. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we're putting that on. And the throttle cable bracket's nice and bent too. You can see this. These holes are drilled all the way through as well. This is supposed to be for an IAT sensor. So this knife is supposed to be threaded. It's just stupid stuff like that. Wow, that is really close. I don't know if that's gonna be enough room to put a hose on there in a clamp or what. I'll have to find out because I have silicone hoses. Holy crap. Uh, I guess we'll find out when I try to put it on. Um, the coating is 
uh, subpar at best. But for the cost of the manifold, I wasn't expecting anything crazy. Uh, it does look like... Alright, so that's now drilled all the way through. That's nice. That's one less thing to worry about. Getting the throttle cable mounted on. Uh, we have a bigger throttle body we can use if we want to. But I'm going to try and use a stock one first because we have the coupler for it. I mean, look at this. This is... I don't know if you can see that. That's all from drilling and machining. So I'm going to have to go through this and deburr some of this stuff. But, uh, um, so yeah, I guess maybe we'll make a plate. Put something cool there. That's it. It's the manifold, the fuel rail, the kit with that. I'm not going to scratch it up anymore. It already is. This stuff is... I can straighten the throttle cable rack out if we need to use it. This is never going to be straight again because it's creased. Uh, that's the best it's going to get. Oh well. So... Full boost. Total junk. Hopefully it works though. Manifold doesn't fit on the head. It's hitting this piece down here. I can't even, bro. It's hitting. Uh, Chico had ordered a uh, different manifold, turbo manifold, and I installed it yesterday and it didn't work the way he was, thought it was going to. Uh, AC didn't clear and a bunch of other. The downpipe was the wrong angle. So we stuck with the manifold we've originally had with the turbo kit. Really the only thing we've changed on this turbo kit so far is we got a two and a half inch downpipe. And we did something different with the feed. Instead of using restrictor, we're doing a straight 4 a.m. straight into the turbo. We'll see. I don't know if that's going to be too much oil or not. Uh, we do have a dash 8 drain, so that kind of balances itself out. So we'll see. Uh, really, I was working on this thing pretty hard yesterday. I got, I had an issue with the bull boost intake manifold where I had to bend the pipe for the coolant hose, this hose here. And when I bent it, it came out of the manifold. So I ended up JB welding that pipe back on to the manifold. And it's nice and tight. Everything's nice and locked down now. All the hoses are on. I got the wiring ran, um, injectors. Everything's plugged up. I even got the charge piping all connected. I don't have any clamps on yet just because I was test fitting. All mounted up to the intercooler. This is the only pipe that I have to cut to shorten to attach there. We even have clearance at the downpipe. This downpipe is going to get re welded anyway. I'm going to contact a buddy and we're going to cut and weld and make that fit along with the dump tube so we can put AC back in the car. Uh, but for right now, it's easier just to have it out. That way he can, you know, do the modifications he has to do. Then we can put the AC compressor back on. I had to rig uh, an old fuel pressure regulator that I had that we actually had on this car previously. Um, the AEM fuel rail, uh, the AEM fuel pressure regulator um, for our Y8 doesn't bolt on to a 92-95 uh, fuel rod, which is what this is, because it's a three-post mount. A lot of single cam stuff I'm learning. You know, I, I had Z6s and stuff, but I never had an issue like this. Um, so I rigged this up. This will work. I know it works because we ran it before. I got the vacuum plugged in. I got the boot sensor plugged in, teed into there. 
I got the wastegate lines all hooked up to the turbo, to the wastegate, to the boost controller. So that's all good. Uh, really, just finished wiring in the two fuses for the boost controller and for the gauges. I just need to connect the battery to see which wire is hot switched. And then I think I can crank this thing for the first time and get some oil flowing through it and see if I can't get this thing fired up. I have to go grab my laptop and plug in the, the ECU just so I can see and make sure everything is where it is. But I have a base, base map from Coogan right now on it for this setup. So I, I got to put spark plugs in there for this too. I got Chico on the phone. We're getting ready to start this thing. All right, here we go.
fresh built? No, mine didn't smell like that. As you saw, I got Chico's car up and started. We're having an issue. Um, it's too much oil into the turbo, I believe. It blew out the seal on the exhaust, I think, because it smokes like a freight train. I'm still clearing the smoke out in the garage. Well, we're gonna have to address that. I'm gonna have to take the downpipe down, just verify that that's what it is first, because I can't imagine it's the motor. It just sounds too healthy. Uh, I do have a small fuel leak here, like it's the same part that I had on my EK, I swapped it over because I took this part. I'm going to be putting his back, I verify that it's definitely oil, uh, the oil drain does leak, so I am going to have to have that pan uh, fitting. I'm going to either JB weld it or actually weld it, I'm not sure yet, but it, it definitely does leak, so it does need to be sealed up. Unfortunately, it is what it is. It's, it leaked right where I thought it was going to. So I know Glenn's will be okay. This is a steel pan, so it's flat. But no such luck with the aluminum. It's just too thick. But yeah, I mean, cranks right up. After I figured out why the starter wasn't working, which was just a bad connection, I guess. Just didn't have it locked onto the starter properly his radio works again we got his gauges working everything on that end is good I had to turn down the uh, the fuel pressure because it was like nine on the AFR gauge <laughs> it was way too rich but all the gauges work um, this thing, I mean, it's running 65 PSI, like 1500 RPM right now too, which is amazing. I'm really glad for that. I have... Uh, I still need to do the fuel pump in this car, and I need to do the fuel pump relay before we do really anything else. But first, I want to get that downpipe taken off once it's cooled down. and Do my little inspection there and see. I'm 90% sure that it's... The, uh, the oil coming through the exhaust just because it when it first started it wasn't smoking so bad and then it just started smoking and I can't imagine it being the motor especially after just doing mine and it not even smoking at all and I did the same exact thing on his I did on mine on mine so. these are I'm not gonna start it up because I need to cool down all right, well, if I don't catch up with you guys uh, here in a little bit, uh, I'll leave this video off here. It, the car starts flawlessly right now, so at least we have that. Like, comment, subscribe, you know, check out the channel. Let me know what you guys think, and uh, I'll see you on the next one.